climate change is an existential crisis and will impact the world's food supply. Investing in sustainable urban food production technologies today can help overcome the food security challenges of tomorrow. I'm pleased to affirm Singapore's support for AIM for Climate. We support the mission's aim of investing in climate-smart agricultural technologies, but recognise that we can't do this alone. We have a saying in New Zealand, He waka ekenoa, we are all in this together, and it is only through international collaboration that we will be able to solve the world's greatest problem. It is a great honour for me to announce Finland's participation in the AIM for Climate initiative as a government partner. Innovations in agriculture and food systems are pillars of sustainable development. We look forward to engaging with everyone as a country with a high level of education and research. Ireland is delighted to join the Agricultural Innovation Mission for Climate. I would like to acknowledge the leadership of the US and the United Arab Emirates in launching this initiative at COP26 in Glasgow. Research, development and innovation in climate-smart agriculture and food practices are central components to implementing the food systems approach that Ireland believes in. We need to share knowledge and ideas. Our combined efforts will lead the way. Agriculture innovation mission for climate is how we can deliver. And we are pleased to be a part of the coalition. Australia is delighted to join the Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate. We would like to thank the United States and the United Arab Emirates for leading on this exciting initiative. Australia is championing climate resilience to drive productivity, profitability and sustainability across our agriculture sector. Brazil is proud to participate in and support the Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate. Brazil intends to increase efforts continuously in climate smart agriculture and food systems innovation. Japan is going to accelerate agriculture R&D and innovation for sustainable climate smart agriculture. In collaboration with other partners of the AIM for Climate. Our planet is in peril, but there is still hope. We in the agriculture sector believe that science and innovation is our hope for survival and progress in a changing climate. Therefore, the Philippines fully support the goals of the AIM for climate. 2025-ig 28 millió dollárra növeljük az agrárium klímával kapcsolatos kutatási és innovációs aktivitását. Azt gondolom, hogy ez egy nagyon komoly vállalás, ennek ellenére közel sem elég az előttünk álló kihívás megoldásához, ezért fontos, hogy minél többen együtt köteleződjünk el. Excellencies, dear colleagues, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations is proud to cooperate as a professional knowledge partner together with the governments of the United States of America and of the United Arab Emirates in the Agricultural Innovation Mission for Climate Initiative, M for Climate. The climate crisis is impacting all regions of the world and is strengthening global commitments to end world hunger by 2030. The most affected are rural communities, and smallholders and family farmers who depend on agriculture for their livelihoods, who produce the 80% of the world food. Last year, the number of the hungry people rose into 811 million, and the climate crisis was one of the main drivers. We cannot achieve the Paris Agreement and sustainable development goals unless we transfer our agri-food systems as they play a key role in ensuring the five Fs, food, feed, fiber, fuel, and a friendly environment. To ensure the transformation required, we need innovation. Innovation to advance the latest biotechnology, BT, information technology, IT, and others. 
innovation to produce more with less in a more efficient, effective, uh, coherent manner and within our planetary boundaries. Innovation in our financial, institutional, and the partnerships models, and innovation to new way of thinking and change our business model. Business as usual is no longer an option. Efforts support members to mainstream and scale up innovation solutions across the agro food systems through the flagship initiatives, such as FL's Green City Initiative, which offers innovative on the ground actions to enhance urban green products, green industries, green economy, with a greener environment and bad agro food systems. FL's 1000 Digital Villages Initiative that will enable farmers to use the digital technology to improve the production, market access, services, and the livelihoods. Through the FL Hand in Hand Initiative, that is an evidence based country lead, country owned initiative to accelerate agro food system transformation, to eradicate poverty, SDG 1, and end hunger, and all farmers' malnutrition, SDG 2, by matchmaking hand in hand geospatial platform to support the decision makers with the big data. And FL is setting up the international platform for digital food and agriculture to harness the digital tools. Innovation can unleash the potential of agro food systems to be more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable. It is critical that rural farmers be a part of this innovative solutions. As an knowledge partners to the M for climate, FL looks forward to working with all stakeholders to advance collaboration in addressing the climate crisis and the food insecurity, and for achieving the four betters: better production, better nutrition, a better environment, a better life for all, leaving no one behind. I thank you. Hello everyone. It's an honor for me to join you today to celebrate the launch of the Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate, and more broadly, the spirit of action and innovation at the center of COP26. More than 50 years ago, Ralph created our company with a vision anchored in timelessness, creating things that stand the test of time, that are meant to be loved, 
worn, and passed on to the next generation. Today, that vision continues to inspire not only the incredible products we create, but how they are created. We all have a collective responsibility to protect the natural world around us. It's beauty that inspires us and it's resources that power us. The mission for governments, businesses, and society is clear. A better tomorrow requires urgent action on climate. Inspired by this mission, our company has set out on a path to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2040. We're also partnering to scale solutions across our industry that can positively impact communities and our planet. That commitment underlies the vision for the U.S. Regenerative Cotton Fund, a project that Ralph and I are proud to say has been recognized as an aim for Climate Innovation Sprint Partner. The goal of the fund is simple, to work with farmers to help usher in a more sustainable future for cotton production in the United States, while at the same time helping to heal our planet by drawing down 1 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent by 2026. This endeavor made possible by a $5 million commitment from the Ralph Lauren Corporate Foundation, comes at a critical time for cotton producers and the fashion industry. For brands like Ralph Lauren to continue to make progress on our sustainability goals and safeguard our planet, we need to support farmers as they transition to climate smart practices. But the challenges we are facing are so significant and we can only make meaningful progress if we come together. That's why the U.S. Regenerative Cotton Fund is built in partnership with the scientists and experts at the Soil Health Institute. We hope that the U.S. Regenerative Cotton Fund serves as a catalyst for further innovation from our industry peers. And we're inspired by the leadership of the Aim for Climate Initiative and participants across the globe who have committed to investing in innovative, climate-smart agriculture. We are proud to join this critically important effort and continue designing the change needed for a better tomorrow. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the U.S. Center at COP26. My name is David Livingston. I'm a senior advisor to Special Presidential Envoy for Climate, John Kerry. And it's an immense pleasure to welcome you here to the U.S. Center today for the launch of Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate. I'm also very pleased to see so many friends and allies of this initiative across our government and across other institutions here with us today. Secretary Vilsack, Administrator Power, Minister Omheri of the United Arab Emirates, Dr. Elizabeth Cousins of the UN Foundation, and I see some other senators in the audience as well. Thank you for joining us, as well as Senator Casey from Pennsylvania. Now, the UAE has dedicated significant time and support and has been a committed partner in this effort and I want to take a moment to thank them here at the beginning as well. All of us here in Glasgow know that the climate crisis is also a food and agriculture crisis. Farmers and ranchers and frankly everyone has seen those impacts already. Droughts, floods, wildfires, heat waves, they devastate crops and harvests. Crustaceans, the basis of our marine economy, and marine food chain cannot grow their shells in warmer and more acidic waters. So we need to reduce emissions from this sector to help keep 1.5 degrees C within reach. Even as we ensure that our food and agriculture systems are adapted and resilient 
to the warming world that we will encounter in the years ahead. That's what this pioneering Aim for Climate initiative will do. Driving climate smart agriculture and food systems innovation worldwide over the next five years. We have a lot of work to do. There's an innovation investment gap that we have to close. There are specific innovation goals that we have to tackle with great vigor and effort. From electrified tractors and farm equipment to drought resistant crops, to low carbon fertilizers and beyond. Now, since we previewed this effort at President Biden, since President Biden previewed this effort in April at the Leaders Summit on Climate, more than 30 governments have joined us to pledge $4 billion in increased climate smart agriculture innovation spending over the next five years. On top of this base, more than 40 non-government partners, including the UN Foundation, will lead a series of innovation sprints which will help generate creative solutions and accelerate our progress. I'm confident that we can and will grow to be even more powerful together, to be inclusive of all sorts of solutions across mitigation, adaptation, and agricultural productivity. Together, we can improve food security, deliver jobs and economic growth, and help raise our climate ambition. There's no one I can think of who better articulates that inclusive vision than the president of the UN Foundation, Dr. Elizabeth Cousins. And so I want to welcome her here up to the stage to deliver our first remarks. Please. Thank you very much, David. And please tell me if this is working properly. Excellent. It's uh, such a pleasure um, to be here with such distinguished speakers, some old friends, um, Secretary Vilsack, Administrator Power, Minister Al-Mahiri, Senator Casey, and others. You know, just a few weeks ago, the UN Secretary General hosted a food systems summit at the UN General Assembly. One of the biggest takeaways was about exactly what brings us here today together, the interdependence of our food and climate challenges and the need to tackle them together. The past year gave us a cruel demonstration of this reality. The pandemic wiped out decades of development progress, hundreds of millions of people pushed back into chronic hunger, extreme poverty increasing for the first time in a generation, on top of what was already a rising number of people suffering severe food insecurity even before COVID-19. Climate change makes all of that exponentially worse. Climate change will make food less available, less nutritious, it will increase its price, it will heighten competition over vital resources like water and land. And particularly severe impacts will be felt by the most vulnerable, from low-income countries to vulnerable communities in every country. For countries and communities dependent on agriculture, especially smallholder farmers, the toll is already fearsome. Now at the same time, our food system, as we've heard, is responsible for roughly a quarter of global emissions, so transforming it is absolutely essential to, to tackling climate change. But importantly, transforming our agriculture and food systems is also an essential foundation for everything else, for healthier people, for healthier economies, for better jobs, and for stronger communities. Now the good news is that we've actually radically underinvested in this area. The Commission on Sustainable Agriculture uh, Intensification tells us we have a $15 billion R&D gap. Even when studies also show that every dollar invested in agriculture, international agriculture R&D, can yield a $10 return. So an effort like Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate that seeks to turbocharge investment in agricultural innovation and to see that innovations are shared they're put to practical use and deployed in ways that improve ordinary people's lives has incredible potential for impact at scale. Food system innovation in areas like improved soil management, reduction of food loss and waste, precision agriculture and enhanced livestock management all holds tremendous potential. Farmers and researchers have already developed crops that are more resilient and resistant to stressors like drought, floods and pests and crops that are also more nutritious. Local innovations, indigenous knowledge, regenerative practices, agroecology, all have key roles to play. 
So we have an opportunity with this agenda also to build bridges and to put equity at the very heart of our work. Research tells us that only about 2% of studies focus on solutions for smallholder farmers and producers. And most research doesn't really engage producers and their communities or those who work across the food system value chain. So local innovation networks, farmer to farmer knowledge exchange will be critical to this effort and give us an opportunity to look at fresh ways to strengthen the local infrastructure, institutions and networks that will be critical to putting climate smart agriculture into practice. Now we've heard Secretary Vilsack say that this agenda needs an all of the above strategy. Well, we couldn't agree more. The climate crisis, our food and hunger challenges, the health of our societies, they don't need either or solutions. They need both and solutions. And that spirit is at the heart of this effort. So all of that is why we're so pleased at the United Nations Foundation to be here to help launch the Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate. And we're excited to see its ambition and scope take shape. This unique and diverse coalition can play a critical role to catalyze the food system transformation that is essential to a healthy planet, healthy economies, healthy communities, and healthy lives. We're grateful to the United States and the United Arab Emirates for spearheading this effort, and we're excited to see it already grow into such a diverse coalition of countries, institutions, philanthropies, companies, farmers, innovators, and others. We will only solve the climate crisis and provide for the healthier, more prosperous and more equitable world we want if we transform this most basic of our essential life support systems. There's so much that this initiative can do and we're looking forward to rolling up our sleeves with all of you in this critical work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Cousins. And now for our next speaker, it's my great pleasure to welcome up a champion for feeding and lifting up the hungry and the poor around the world, the administrator of the U.S. Agency for International Development, Samantha Power. Thank you so much. Uh, it is a great honor to be here with Secretary Vilsack, Senator Casey, Elizabeth Cousins, and the UAE Minister of Climate Change and Environment, uh, Al Mahiri. Um, just last week, the agency that I have the privilege of running, USAID, celebrated our 60th anniversary after its founding by President Kennedy. And today we still live by a principle that he articulated back in 1961. The way he put it was that, quote, all nations, all people, all inhabitants of this planet have all the food that they need, all the food that they deserve as human beings, end quote. All the food that they deserve simply by being human. That was the goal and it remains the goal. We now have a new enemy. All around the world, we've already seen climate change posing a dire threat to food security, causing, as we've heard, more heat, more droughts, more flooding. These extreme weather conditions make it harder to perform the basic activities that have sustained human life for millennia, to grow food, fish, to raise livestock. And as is the case with so many aspects of the climate crisis, those least to blame are suffering the harshest consequences. Two thirds of the world's rural poor depend on agriculture for food and livelihoods. And wealthy nations like the United States, responsible for much of the carbon pollution currently in our atmosphere, bear a special responsibility to these communities that are being the most directly harmed. In support of AIM for Climate, USAID will undertake a number of efforts to dramatically increase research and innovation to develop cutting edge, climate smart agriculture that is effective and that is sustainable so that families and communities, particularly those on the front lines of the climate crisis, are better equipped to face a rapidly changing climate. As part of our commitment this week, we announced an investment of at least $215 million in CGIAR, the world's largest public sector agricultural research partnership. And now, for the first time in its storied 50-year history, the entire CGIAR network, 8,000 scientists, 
and 15 world-class research centers all around the world will focus on one core mission, transforming food, land, and water systems to address the climate crisis. USAID's investment is going to support scientists and researchers at CGIAR, 19 of whom have been awarded the World Food Prize since its founding, to make it possible for people in the developing world to feed themselves and their families in ever more harsh conditions by creating new resilient crop varieties and seeds like drought tolerant maize that can weather extreme conditions. We will also continue to partner with the research institutions that hold the potential for the next breakthrough technologies, including historically black colleges and universities, land-grant universities, and research institutions in low- and middle-income countries through our Feed the Future Innovation Labs. These labs, like CGIAR, use science and technology to address some of the most urgent challenges posed by the climate crisis to agriculture and to food security. They're also cost-effective. As we've heard, for every dollar invested in climate-smart agricultural technologies through these labs, smallholder farmers have gained at least $4 in benefits. And today, I am pleased to announce that the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for current and emerging threats to crops is being awarded to Pennsylvania State University. <laughs> the lab at Penn State will lead these efforts to prevent and forecast pests, diseases, and weeds that harm crops like peanuts, cassava, and cowpea, which are vital to food security. Pests and diseases can destroy food production and livelihoods for millions of people. And we are partnering with Penn State because of its researchers' expertise in pest management, its global networks, and its proven approach to tackling pests and diseases that are exacerbated by climate change. It is wonderful to have Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey here to celebrate this collaboration. Senator Casey has been a steadfast supporter of U.S. leadership in the fight against food insecurity and malnutrition. And as a leading sponsor of the Global Food Security Act, the Senator has equipped USAID with the tools and resources we need to reach millions of people around the world. For all I've said about technology and innovation at its heart, what we are trying to achieve with AIM for Climate is straightforward. We just want to prevent people from going hungry. It's that simple. We know that no one entity alone can tackle the threats to food security posed by climate change. But as President Biden said when he announced AIM for Climate earlier in the week, there's virtually nothing we are unable to do when we do it together. That is why we are partnering with developing countries, with smallholder farmers and businesses, with universities and researchers at home and abroad, with Congress, and with our counterparts in the U.S. government. We've just got to build a broad coalition to develop climate smart solutions to end malnutrition and hunger. As the pioneer of the Green Revolution, Norman Borlaug said, when someone once mentioned to him a region's potential in producing food, the way he put it was, yes, but no one eats potential. No one eats potential. What they eat is food, so we have to bring innovation to bear as climate change puts this basic necessity more at risk. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Administrator Power. And it's an apt way to move on to our next speaker. Uh, the biggest fan of Penn State University, the author of the Global Food Security Act, a tireless advocate for evolving and updating that act to integrate more climate smart elements in view of the challenges of the 21st century that lie ahead of us. Please let me welcome to the stage Senator Bob Casey of Pennsylvania. Well, David, thanks very much. I I'm honored to be here today and to discuss these issues that bring us together with the aim for climate. I do want to commend and salute the work of former Secretary Kerry, serving as our special presidential envoy for climate. We're so grateful that John Kerry once again answered the call of his country, and in this case, the call of the world, to take on this assignment. I'm honored to be in the presence of Secretary Vilsack, 
as well as, 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 well as Administrator Power, UAA Administrator Amahiri, and Elizabeth Cousins. I do want to mention the connection to Pennsylvania for three of our speakers, Secretary Kerry by virtue of Teresa, Samantha Power by virtue of her time living in Pittsburgh, and, and Tom Vilsack, um, a native of the city of Pittsburgh. As many of you know, Pennsylvania is a diverse state. 67 counties, but 48 are rural counties. That doesn't mean there's a farm in every square inch of those 48 counties, but we've got a lot of small towns and agricultural settings throughout those 48 counties. And throughout my time as a public official in our state, at the state and federal level, I've come to know those who work on those farms, those farmers who have that quiet dignity about them, and even a humility about the world around them and the work that they do. And I think that humility is born of the work that they do. They work the land, they understand the seasons, they understand the world, and they certainly understand the environment and the challenge posed by climate change. In a very real sense, not in a spiritual sense, but, but certainly in a, in a real sense for a farmer, Farmers throughout Pennsylvania and throughout our country and throughout the world have a reverence for the earth, and they want to make sure that we protect God's creation. And that reverence that they have for the earth compels them to want to be part of the solution as we combat climate change. So as those farmers take on and have taken on the work that involves being part of the solution, and so many of them are doing it right now, they also face a number of challenges. Our farmers and our foresters are dealing with frequent and severe storms, floods, droughts, wildfires, and the list goes on from there. But often, they are forced to adapt with very limited resources. As the original stewards of our land, farmers can and must be part of the solution when it comes to mitigating climate change. Ambitious investment like AIM for Climate is doing, investment in climate smart agriculture and investment in food system innovation, such as AIM has taken on, will improve agricultural productivity for sure. It will increase climate resilience and it will sequester carbon. Administrator Power was so kind to mention the work that's being done at Penn State. As a senator from Pennsylvania, I want to commend uh, Penn State University for its ex exemplary efforts in the field of climate smart agriculture and for being awarded funding through the AIM for Climate program. The current and emerging threats to crops innovation lab will leverage Penn State's expertise in pest management, its global networks, and its proven plant village approach to tackle pests and disease exacerbated by climate change. We're proud of Penn State for a lot of reasons, but this is certainly one, one of those reasons. Thank you again for this opportunity, and thanks for the passion you bring to the aim for climate. Thank you very much, Senator. And let me also recognize Senator Stavenow, who's joined us. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Now for our next speaker, let me welcome to this stage a, a very unique and an incredibly impactful leader. Uh, the Minister of Climate Change and Environment of the United Arab Emirates is someone who herself grew up in a farming family, who understands the values that farmers and ranchers have, and that also understands well the challenges that a country like the United Arab Emirates faces in a warming world. So please let me welcome to the stage Minister Miriam al -Meheri. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much. First of all, Secretary Vilsack, Senators, Excellencies, colleagues, friends, thank you so much for having us here 
Um, and if you'll allow me, Secretary Vilsack, I want to give a really special thank you to your team and my team who have worked tirelessly. Jamie, thank you so much. <laughs> Jamie Adams has been incredible together with my team and putting or getting us to where we are today, actually. It's been some tiresome work over the last few months really to mobilize the political will, the investments, the partners, and getting us here today. So thank you so much for, for that. And um, really, maybe some of you will say, why is the United Arab Emirates interested in this? Being a small country, water scars, not having any arable land. It's because we care. We see us as responsible global citizens, and we believe in innovation and technology, and this is what this is all about. And we've seen, just by applying technology and innovation in our own country, what we've done in transforming our food systems. We're now growing so many more foods that we didn't grow before. So we've got raspberries, berries, kale, salmon, quinoa, all the, all the foods that we always thought they have no taste, but suddenly they have so much taste because we're able to harvest them at home. So believing in innovation, research and development got us thinking globally, and of course partnering with the United States and, and pushing Aim for C now globally, getting partners on board just because we believe food systems has as much weight as energy systems and mobility systems in the whole climate mitigation efforts. So really Aim for Climate is an effort started by our governments to mobilize and amplify greater investment in agriculture innovation as a form of climate action. And I would emphasize climate action with a view to economic returns. Greenhouse gas emissions from, from food systems, as you all know, constitute at least a quarter of global emissions and agriculture is simultaneously highly vulnerable to the droughts, the floods, fires and all other climate impacts we are now seeing on a daily basis. Historically, much attention was put when you think of climate innovation on energy and the UAE and the United States have been proud to play roles in making renewable energy the game changer it is today. We want to drive the same drive and the same enthusiasm for innovation in agriculture. And it is clear we need both breakthroughs and also enhancements of existing approaches that will give us not only a more better and more resilient food at a meaningfully reduced carbon and environmental footprint, but also high returns on investments. As one of my colleagues put it, we need to talk about soil just as much as we talk about oil. We therefore conceptualized Aim for Climate with inputs from many different stakeholders to be a vehicle for aligning political will and budgets around that innovation. Our goal in launching the initiative in Glasgow here at COP26 was to send a resounding message that agricultural innovation matters and that an impressive and diverse group of countries is committed to accelerating progress. And I think we have succeeded, but there's a lot more work to do. So moving forward, I personally am very excited to offer the UAE's Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week, which occurs each January and is the world's largest annual sustainability gathering as an annual space for AIM for C members to consider joint prioritization of innovation efforts, drawing on the views and knowledge of everyone from multilateral organizations to farmers associations to companies and philanthropies. It is essential that we are making decisions with the best available information from all parts of food systems, with special attention to the needs of food producers in fragile communities. And looking further ahead of that, with the UA's offer to host COP28 in 2023, I can assure you that Aim for Climate and the broader adaptation agenda will be front and center for our presidency. I think we have all seen firsthand that the scale required for innovation, let alone to address climate change, is such that our own investments are more likely to succeed if others are working towards similar goals and if we are all using the best available information. So on this note, I want to thank you all again for joining us and supporting us on our journey for aim for c Thank you. so much, Minister. And now, finally, it's my superb pleasure to welcome to the stage someone who's forgotten more about agriculture and food systems than most of us will ever know in our lives. 
uh, a champion for American farmers and ranchers, our outstanding Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack. Madam Chair, Madam Minister, Madam Administrator, Madam Ambassador, Senator. There's a reason you start with four women, because 70% of the world's farmers are women. And it's an important message, I think, for all of us to understand that when we talk about innovation, uh, we're talking about the need for us to be able to innovate on behalf of all farmers everywhere around the world, large and small. So it's certainly a privilege to be here today, and I want to thank uh, my partner, uh, Minister uh, Al Mahari, for uh, we've been together quite a bit here today and, and yesterday, but we have, I think, been very consistent in our messaging, which is our teams have done a great job of beginning to launch this initiative uh, that President Biden and world leaders launched uh, 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 earlier. But we do it with a passion, and we do it with a commitment. I think we recognize uh, that we are at a crossroads in agriculture. We face the challenge as a world of ending global hunger, and agriculture and farmers have a principal responsibility. We know that we have to address the climate crisis, and we know we're continuing to fight an ongoing pandemic. And we know that together, we can and must do more. And it's true that agriculture must be part of the solution. And that's a heavy responsibility. The agricultural sector globally is facing challenges in meeting that demand for a growing population, which is estimated to exceed 9 billion people by the year 2050. To be able to produce the food to feed 9 billion people while addressing the climate crisis conserving natural resources and becoming resilient is no small order. Success will require that we do so in a way that producers benefit economically, that communities benefit from a societal uh, access to affordable and accessible food, and that we indeed reach our climate objectives. From an economic standpoint, farming must be profitable uh, to ensure that farmers have decent standards of living everywhere and that new farmers, young farmers, are drawn to the profession. To be socially sustainable, food must be accessible and affordable to all to ensure that they have the nutrition needed to reach their fullest potential. And from a climate change standpoint, the agricultural sector has to be empowered, government policy and government financing and other ways, to take the opportunity and to seize the opportunity to be part of the solution. History has shown that meeting these multiple challenges will require innovation with a focus on productivity and efficiency, coupled with a, a, a laser-like focus on conservation and resource health. For the last 90 years in the United States, commodity production has indeed increased by 400 percent, while acreage in production has dropped by 9 percent. We've had efficiency gains. We've improved on-farm conservation practices and we've driven some improvements in environmental outcomes. We know that conservation tillage, which has reduced soil erosion and sediment loss, is now wildly used on major crops in the United States. Uh, these improvements have helped to reduce soil erosion. From 1982 to 2012, soil erosion on U.S. cropland caused by water and wind has declined by 45 percent from almost 3 billion tons per year to 1.6 billion tons per year. Uh, this is progress, but more needs to be done because that level of crop law, uh, of livestock, of topsoil loss is an amount still too high. When soil is healthy and cared for, there are many benefits, both for the environment, for climate resiliency, and certainly for the farmer's bottom line. The adoption of con uh, conservation tillage and no-till in the U.S. is a success story. We're going to build on that to embrace the next generation of technologies and practices that will allow U.S. agriculture to continue trends in productivity while addressing climate change with the responsibility of sharing knowledge and information globally. 
Now, there are a broad array of these technologies that will emerge in the marketplace, and some of them are already in development. More efficient fertilizers, advanced information systems, genetic improvements, and improved manure management, for example, can reduce the pressure to bring new lands into production and can improve the economies for farmers. At the same time, they can play a, a real role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and storing carbon. Building on this success and with an eye towards the future, President Biden's Build Back Better framework, combined with Senator Stabenow's leadership on the Climate Solutions Act, creates a framework for the largest effort in American history to focus on climate smart agricultural practices. Through significant investments, in innovation, science, and resources, farmers and ranchers of all sizes, all types of operations, will have a host of new tools to lead the way in the fight on climate. At its peak, the increased investments in climate smart agriculture included in these initiatives alone could reach roughly 100 million cropland acres in the United States and benefit a nearly 200,000 farms. Ambitious investment in climate smart agriculture and food system innovation will also, I think, help create a surge of solutions around the world, enabling our world to meet nutritional needs, increase agricultural productivity, improve livelihoods, promote equity, conserve nature and biodiversity, build resilience to climate change, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and sequester carbon. Now, as we've heard earlier this week, we announced the establishment and the launch of AIM for C. Working together over the last six months, we've extended invitations to countries, to knowledge partners, and to our sprint partners. And today, alongside more than 80 partners now from across the globe, we are really focused on catalyzing greater public-private investment, cross-sectional partnerships, and climate-smart agriculture and food system innovation, raising global ambition and underpinning a more rapid and transformational effort on climate in all countries. Government partners provided the crucial foundation for AIM for C through a wave of new public investment in climate smart agriculture and food system innovation. We now have business, ph philanthropic organizations, and other non-government partners who are building on this foundation. They're going to do it through a series of innovation sprints. These are investments in specific, impactful, expedited efforts, providing critical knowledge for identifying investment gaps challenges and opportunities. I think our hope is that together AIM for C will mobilize new investment targeted now in the billions of dollars to climate smart agriculture and food systems. Again assisting all types of agriculture in all sizes of operations. Now we've just begun. Uh, partners have already collected uh, uh, commitments to invest uh, four billion dollars including a billion dollars from the UAE and a billion dollars from the United States. That's a start. But it's nowhere near enough. Together we can and we must do more. Together we can enable a quantum leap in agricultural innovation, empowering agriculture to be part of the solution to address the climate crisis and to create co-benefits of climate uh, action. Folks, I've had an opportunity to talk with a lot of farmers around the world. And I can tell you to a person, they are committed to the responsibility they have to help feed an ever-increasing world population. I think sometimes those farmers feel left out and left behind. They sometimes feel that governments aren't listening or governments don't understand or governments don't appreciate the risk that they assume in taking on this responsibility. I think at this COP meeting we've begun the process of connecting government, nonprofit, private sector to those farmers in a meaningful and significant way. I think this is uh, the beginning of a new chapter, a new relationship, a stronger relationship, a more powerful relationship, and, and one that I think will, will encourage farmers uh, to do what they are traditionally bound to do, in which they are, as Senator, uh, Senator Casey indicated, they are made to do, which is to be the stewards of land and water. They, if we give them the resources, if we give them the tools, they will respond, they will act, and they and we will be better off for it. That's what we're aiming for with AIM for C. Thank you very much.
Thank you all so much for joining us here today for the launch of Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate. We're grateful you took the time out of a busy COP26 to share this moment with us. And we hope that you'll be with us along the journey at subsequent events at every COP from here until the culmination of this initiative five years from its start. Now, when we look back at the end of AIM4C, at the end of the five, first five-year period, I hope that not only we will, we will be able to say that we've done much to close the investment gap in climate smart ag innovation together, but also that we have changed awareness, we've changed understanding of the role that the agriculture sector can play in addressing the climate crisis. The agricultural sector is not a zero-sum game, and addressing climate change within it is not zero-sum. Instead, we can grow this pie together, this climate smart, climate resilient, low emissions pie that can nourish us for the years to come. And then when we look back, I hope also that when we hear the words clean tech in 2025, we'll think not just about solar panels and electric vehicles and wind farms, but we'll also think about the food tech and the ag tech that's preparing our low emissions ag sectors around the world to thrive even in a changing climate. Thank you all for joining us today. Have a wonderful rest of your climate conference. Thank you.